One of the most fascinating and stubbornly enigmatic aspects of animal behavior is their intelligence. It's a very tricky thing to study, but with patience, persistence, and clever research design, some valuable information can be gained. Over the decades, we've learned a lot about the general intelligence of various types of animals, and it's informed our theories on the mind and consciousness, and the ability for a brain of particular complexity to perceive and understand the world around them, as illustrated by their senses. Among these data, one trend that we've noticed is that a larger brain-to-body size ratio, and a larger density of neurons, and a larger frequency of connections between neurons are all associated with higher intelligence. This manifests in various behaviors reflecting the complexity of the thoughts behind them. So some animals, for example, struggle with the theory of mind, and they can't comprehend that other individuals may know something that they don't, or vice versa. While other animals can not only handle the theory of mind with relative ease, but they even make and use tools to achieve complex, multi-step goals. Now, sometimes we see stuff that we don't expect, like complex cognitive abilities typically only seen in larger, more complex animals, somehow manifesting in the behavior of a simpler, stupider animal. And this brings us to today's science news. Researchers have found that the small jumping spider, Minimaris semilimbatus, appears to have a cognitive ability that we've previously only seen in vertebrate animals. These jumping spiders appear to be able to tell the difference between living things and non-living things. Now this may seem pretty simple, but it can actually be pretty nuanced when you start to pick it apart and try and understand what's going on here. So for example, any animal out in the wilderness living its life, at some point it's going to have to make a calculation, something along the lines of, um, was the grass rustling from the wind, or because there was a potential predator prowling through it. So being able to make these small, subtle determinations is really important, because it can literally be the difference between escaping a predator and living another day, and wasting your energy running away from the wind. The researchers talk about biological versus non-biological motion, defining the former as a semi-rigid movement style with joints that move with the limb, but maintain a set distance between each other. So think like the movement of a crab's legs, or your wiggling fingers, or the flex of a bird's wing, as opposed to the movement of a rock tumbling down a hill, a tree branch waving in the wind, or the flow and undulation of water in a stream. Now in this study, the researchers used a point light display to create biological and non-biological movements. So let me briefly explain how this mechanism works. So imagine you're looking at a set of dots. You don't know it, but the dots correspond to the joints on a human body. When the dots move, they'll recreate the movement of a human body. And we can look at this movement, even though we're just looking at a cloud of dots, we can look at the movement of the dots and recognize that it's a human. We can see the biological motion behind the movement of the dots. There isn't any apparent biological component, but if we see a still image of the dots, they'll just appear as a clump of dots. There isn't any apparent biological component. If you can't see the motion, the biological motion, then the biological nature of this arrangement of dots would go over your head. You wouldn't notice it. There'd be no reason to even assume that there was a biological component in the first place. So, the researchers used similar point light displays to test the jumping spiders. And in the abstract of their paper, the researchers explained their study design and the results, saying, quote, Due to their highly developed visual system and complex visual behaviors, we investigated the capability of jumping spiders to discriminate biological from non-biological motion using point light display stimuli. These kinds of stimuli maintain motion information while being devoid of structure. By constraining spiders on a spherical treadmill, we simultaneously presented two point light displays with specific dynamic traits, and registered their preference by observing which pattern they turned toward. Spiders clearly demonstrated the ability to discriminate between biological motion and random stimuli, but curiously, they turned preferentially towards the latter. However, they showed no preference between biological and scrambled displays, results that match responses produced in vertebrates. Crucially, spiders turned toward the stimuli when these were only visible by the lateral eyes, evidence that this task may be eye-specific." 
All right, so there was a lot of stuff there. Uh, let, me, let me break it down a little bit. One of the most curious details is that Aside from the incredible fact that these spiders are capable of telling the difference between the movements of animate and inanimate matter, is that the spiders seem to preferentially turn to and focus on the movements of inanimate matter. The researchers explain in their paper that the spiders appear to possess an animacy detection mechanism that's on par with vertebrates, but they lack the resolution to tell the difference between biological movement and scrambled, simulated biological movements. They also found that the details of these motions are detected by the motion-sensitive secondary eyes, which are known to have very good spatial acuity, with nearly 360 degrees of visual field. But unlike the two giant primary eyes, these secondary eyes don't have good visual acuity. They don't have a good ability to perceive details. The researchers note that if the spider can see something it recognizes and something it doesn't recognize, and you know, both of these items are within the, the field of vision of its secondary eyes, it'll turn preferentially to focus on the thing it doesn't recognize, and then it'll focus on it with its, its larger pair of eyes with the, the high visual acuity, you know, its, its primary pair. So it does this as the thing it recognizes is still within its field of view via the secondary eyes. Okay, so there, there's several nested takeaways that we can learn from this study. The first is that there may be many invertebrate animals that possess cognitive abilities typically only seen in vertebrates. And this may only come as a surprise to us because we may not have developed suitable means to test these animals to fully explore their cognitive abilities, as revealed by the novel study mechanism used in this study. And perhaps most important, this is because we still fundamentally don't understand the hard problem of consciousness or how animals perceive their world, and how this affects their interactions with it. This is why I love this particular field of biology. Neurology and neurobehavioral biology, th these are all still a frontier of science full of mysteries, and awesome stuff like this can jump out and surprise us. Oh.